from PRX. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and friends beyond the binary. It's a podcaster. I'm not just leaning in. Right now I'm leaning over. Uh, the podcaster that'll bend over a microphone, hinging at his hips, though. I don't like, uh, I'm only laughing because I, I still don't know what that, I, I still say. Am I hinging at my hips? I don't care if it's dance class, meditation class, uh, yoga class, whatever that one is, Pilates class. I said, what, what do you mean hinging at my hips? I don't, I don't know. Like, am I bent, bent? So anyway, patrons, uh, it's time for Sleep With Me podcast to put you to sleep. So this is it's time for the podcaster that doesn't know the difference between hinge and his hips. I mean, I do know the difference conceptually. And even even when I look in a mirror, I say, well, how am I supposed to bend over and hinge in my hips when I'm looking over at the mirror? Like, then I'm probably, oh, it's time for sleep with me, though. Sorry about that. It's time for sleep with me podcast to put you to sleep. And always remember to check our show notes if you need self-care, if you want to support the black members of your community, our community, because black lives matter. If you're looking to change or if you want to support this podcast coming out twice a week, uh, check out our sponsors. When your hand hits the fridge tomorrow, think show notes and then look in your podcast app because uh, and, and here, here's what you'll be looking at tomorrow. Uh, hey, everybody, it's Scoots here, and I, I just wanted to make this quick. I'm trying to make these patron spots quick. If you listen to the show a lot, you know I'm here. You know I care. I care about taking your mind off of stuff so you could fall asleep. You know, I've been working on the show since 2013, and I put a lot of work into the podcast, and I still put a lot of work in. If you value that work and you're in a position to do so, think about becoming a patron. But you should also think about becoming a patron if you listen to Sleep With Me a lot, not only because... You say, well, I get a lot out of sleep with me. Let me give back. But we have some great benefits. Uh, you can connect with them through most podcast apps. You can get ad-free episodes. And those episodes don't have uh, any of the, 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 the jingles or anything that some people, a few people find those disruptive. You could get around those at $5 a month. There's no thank yous at the end because some people let me know those were disruptive. And well, I keep those in the free feed because it, like overall, the majority of people enjoy them. If you want to get around them, you could do that at $5 a month month. And if you listen a lot, like you want to listen to all intro episodes twice a month, an all night episode once a month, behind the scenes exclusive episodes and coming up uh, are behind the facts of the Great British Bake Off. If you want more Sleep With Me story only episodes, access to the old episodes, think about supporting the show at 10 or 20 bucks a month uh, and you can do any of that. If you're a rep, but only do it if you want, you can. If you can't do it, that's why I make sure, that's why I work so hard so this podcast podcast is free. You don't got to worry about it. There's nothing wrong. That's, you know, I work hard so you can listen to it for free. But if you're in a position to do so and you say, yeah, I want to, I want to support the show right now. You could do it, you know, and then go to sleep after. Go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron, P-A-T-R-O-N. Sign up, support the show on Patreon. You could save a lot of money if you become an annual patron. It also just helps the show because we can count on that money. It also helps the podcast a lot. You get 12 months of patronage for the for 11 months, and we know that we don't have to worry about uh, credit cards not going through and stuff like that. So it's a huge help. It's a win-win. So if you're a rebel with a cause that gets a lot out of the show and you say, you know what, I'm wild enough to pay for a free podcast because I love it and I enjoy it and I feel like I'm a part of the show. I want to support it. Go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. Thanks. All right, everybody. It's time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone. The one part of the podcast I need you to hear is where I pop my peas and, you know, uh, make noise like that. I want to thank these. Are, oh, this is where I thank the uh, uh, listeners who supported the sponsor. So we get you to bring this podcast twice a week. I want to thank Peg B, who supported Grove, Rose T, who supported Native, uh, Becca, who supported Sun Soil. Oh, boy. And they shared on uh, Instagram. Uh, Peg sent Grove email so let the sponsors know because especially like towards the end of the year you know we're hoping to keep these sponsors on for 2021 if you support a sponsor try to tag them in a social media post tag me or send them a message and let them know their partnership with the show is important to you and then i could try to thank you here on the sleepy supporter zone like peg rose and becca uh, the second part of sleepy supporter zone is you getting the support you need if you're having a tough time right now there's gonna be links uh, to organizations uh, you can connect with 
worth in the show notes. Uh, so reach out uh, for some extra help right now if you need it. And then, uh, you know, what needs our support is our community. So please support the members of your community, our community, you know, start to, to start to be a part of the solution, to be a part of positive change, to let our neighbors know black lives matter. If you're looking to change or, or you've been impacted by racism, there's going to be links to organizations that can help with that in the show notes. And I'm still recommending that a podcast I love, Appearances. Uh, please, please, please check out Appearances. It's by Sharon Mashihi. And please let Sharon know. These are the kind of audio artists we want to support and to encourage to keep putting their audio art, uh, these masterpieces out into the world to sharing the stories they've created because uh, it's, it's what makes life, you know, it's what makes listening to podcasts amazing and what being in the world, I, I don't know. So please check out Appearances in your podcast app of choice. Appearances is a podcast like I've talked about. It, it, it kind of it straddles the line between fiction and truth, between personal essay and uh, beautiful short story. Appearances brings to life an Iranian-American family and community through the real and fantastical mental machinations, through the journey of its uh, lead character, Melanie, uh, in her, you know, relationship with her family and her journey and her desire to be a mother. So please check it out, Appearances. Check it out on the podcast app of choice, your choice, uh, the podcast app you're listening to right now. And that is the end of the Sleepy Supporter Zone. Oh, Mystery Bard, a lot of people help out on this show. Who are they? Posty poster song Sounds like an earful Wrote the theme song Edits episodes too. Carl W. The Legend Also edits episodes Kenny, Scotty, Jennifer, and Ashley run, 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 run. Eric and the team Write us down or on the website I am the mystery bar I do the lullabies, yeah I do commissions at Jonathan Mandatlet I'll write a song for you It's almost Christmas, y'all You can tell me the story, yeah you see the kindness shine straight on through when the listeners form their own Facebook group. Keith, Stacy, Sarah, Julie, and Jennifer. These are your narrators. You get support, dear scooter on Patreon. Buy the merch and support the sponsors. You can find anything you want at sleepwithmepodcast.com. And we're so proud. Thanks, Mr. Bard. And anybody who wants to commission a holiday gift to, from you as a song, should go to song.jonathanman.net. I'm at Dearest Scooter on Twitter and Instagram. And don't forget, you can listen to Sleep With Me in your smart speaker if you want. Just tell it to play Sleep With Me podcast. And uh, what do you say we slow it down and get on with the show? Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep? Well, welcome this is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it the bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake. So it could be thoughts, you know, things you're thinking about, things on your mind. So thoughts, feelings, it could be physical, feelings, uh, physical, things you're feeling physically, thoughts, feelings, physical sensations, that's what they are. So thoughts are things on your mind, you're like on your mind or in your mind. And then feelings are any emotions coming up for you. Thoughts are about the past, present, or future. Same with the feelings and physical sensations. Could be something else, so changes in time, temperature, routine. Yeah, when I'm recording this, it's actually, we just fell back. And that's so that's always, it can throw people off, not as much as a springing forward. And you would think that if it there was a year to get rid of all that, it would be 2020. I mean, 2020, we could use all the sun, sunlight we can get, right? Uh, am I right? Uh, but, you know, they, they say that, uh, I don't know, I said, don't most clocks reset themselves? What is the... What's the hang up here? But, but I think we even tried to pass a law in California. And they, well, they said, yeah, we'll do a, well, we passed, a, I think, a law to make a study to not change it. They said, okay, yeah, we're going to put a task force on that. They said, what do you need? A, you need a task force to figure out? They say, just don't do it. Like, here's the thing. Time change. Don't, like, uh, we, it changes on its own. Do, time just does, does, it keeps moving. Or does it move at all? I don't know. And I, that I want to think about it at bedtime. Thanks, Scoots.
Yeah, you're right. Uh, these are the things that go through my head at bedtime. But I'm trying to speak out on your behalf uh, and say, hey, let's let's get this off of all of our collective plates. Uh, but so we did fall back. I did actually get an extra hour of sleep because of it. So the the thing would be, like, you, you could do that, but just do it every, can you do that fall back thing every single night till we get back to the, like, there's a proposal. And again, no, no better time than the present to test it. Let's just fall back every night until, you know, permanent, you know, what is there? 30 hours in a day, 30 hours in a day, no, 24 hours in a day. There's about 30 days in a month, 20, there's like 27 or 28 days in February though. Let's try it on February fall back month. Uh, we're the month where we fall back every single night. So you get an hour, extra hour of sleep may throw other things off. But uh, these are the kind of ideas. You, oh, so sorry. It's time for sleep with me. Podcast about your sleep. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to take your mind off of whatever's keeping you awake. It could be any of the things I listed. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use a lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones, pointless meanders, superfluous tangents. So I'm going to go off topic, as you've seen already, early. I thought I was going to be talking about whatever I was talking about in the intro, which, oh, hinging at the hips makes me, you know, like uh, time changes make my hips whinge instead of hinge. Uh, but whatever scheme week, I'm going to try to take your mind off of that. And a couple of things, if you're new, or a couple of things to know right up front. One, this is a podcast that is very different. So if you're having a tough time or you're wondering, what is this? What is going on here? What is this person? I say, yeah, no, that makes total sense. This podcast is a bit different, and it, it takes a few times to get used to, or to, to get used to so much that you stop paying attention to it. So if you're skeptical or doubtful, that totally makes sense. I want to acknowledge that first, because I would be if I was uh, new to this podcast. And most of the reviewers do say, yeah, it takes two or three tries to get used to the fact uh, that you don't really pay attention to this podcast. So... That's the first thing I think to know is like this podcast is a bit different. It's, uh, you don't really listen to it. You just kind of barely listen to it. You say, uh-huh, uh-huh, okay. Yeah, like uh, we're hinging at the hips. So kind of like, it, that's a thing. Like, what it, like that's the difference between uh, a Zoom, Zoom yoga class and a real one. Like, especially if they, they say, well, you could turn your camera on or off. I'll say, oh, I'll turn it off. And they say, oh, okay, but unmute yourselves. Uh, and then if the, if the teacher, I want to, how come no one's, are there yoga professors? You say, well, I'm a, are you a yoga instructor or a yoga teacher? I'm a yoga, I'm a professor. I'm a professor of yoga. I mean, I, I profess, uh, well, I guess I would be a yogi, but that's a different kind of yoga. But when the teacher says, hinge at your hips, uh, if it was in Zoom class, I could say, oh yeah, teach, I'm totally hinging at my hips. Oh boy, my back is, uh. Stack, you know, whatever you say, like you say, stack those vertebrae and make yourself taller. That's another one I can never wrap. I, I say, okay, make myself taller. You, if I like, if I could have done that, I would have done it a long time ago. Uh, I mean, these are concepts I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not making fun of. I really just struggle with. It. I say, okay, pull your head up, uh, like you're on a string. And I, I seriously, I, I try to do those kind of things, especially when the teacher's there. And then the teacher, and I have a pretty, uh, my personal boundaries extend a ways out. So then they come, like, uh, the back when you used to take classes, which for me was like 10 years ago, they'd come and they say, okay, no, no, this is a, your hips or pull your shoulders back and down. And I say, I, what, I don't know what you're taught. I don't know what you got to put your shoulders, my shoulders are down. No, no, no. Just like when a photographer says to relax and be natural, I say, okay, there's just zero. Thanks for bringing that up. Now there's zero per chance. Zero. But with a Zoom class, you could say, oh boy, my hips are hinged. Oh boy, are my shoulders down and back? I've never, they've never been more down or back before. Okay, so what was I saying? So just barely pay attention to me. I mean, I think that those kind of things qualify me uh, for putting you to sleep, not for uh, mastering body i mean, not trying i'm trying to be more aware of my body it just feels to me like my hips and like it just, i just got one body i don't have uh like if i was an action figure 
I'd say when I play with G.I. Joes or whatever Barbies, I can totally hinge their hips. I know exactly what you mean. And that right now I'm holding my lower back and trying to just feel. It does not feel like my hips have a hinge in there. I'm, I mean, I'm not kidding. Like w- without a... I think that... Isn't that why they made the spine so flexible? Like so you could just r- roll your spine over. This was in the early days, not to go off topic yet again, but they're like always sunny is a, a show that's been on the air for a long time. And I can still remember one of the early seasons they were lifting something. They said, you got to lift with your back. It was like, I don't think I've ever laughed more hard in my life. Uh, no, you got to, are you lifting with your back? That was the, 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 the joke in there. It was so good. So anyway, okay. Back to the, uh. Where was I? Oh, I was trying to tell you what, why not? I was trying to tell you not to listen to me. So I think I got that covered. Don't just barely pay attention. Listen loosely. And also there's no pressure to fall asleep. I'm going to be here for about an hour and you can fall asleep whenever you want. That's why the shows are so long. So you can just drift off. And if you can't sleep, I'll be here to keep you company to the very end. So I'm here and it, or if you wake up or if you need the podcast during the day, so it's a podcast you don't listen to and you don't really fall asleep to it. Uh, so so those are two things you need to know. The other things you need to know if you're new right up front, which is like I'm already 10 minutes in the show, the structure of the show is very different, clearly. show starts off with a greeting, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, friends beyond the binary. And that way you know you're welcome. Then there's business, or then there's the supporter, supporter stuff and supporting the listener stuff. Then there's business, or that's all in the beginning, the first six minutes or so. That's how we keep the podcast going. Then there's an intro from about minute six to a minute 20 or so. And the intro is uh, like a show within a show. It, the intro ideally introduces the new listener to the podcast and either helps you unwind or puts you to sleep or, or like as part of your wind down routine. And they can really throw new listeners off because they say, well, when's the show going to start? When are you going to start talking about Mandalorian? And I say, well, around 20 minutes in. And then you might listen to that. And you say, well, when is it going to get sleepy? I say, well, it kind of already, like, when's the story start? And I say, well, the idea of the beginning of the intro is for a regular listener, it's familiar because I always try to explain what the podcast is. Then I go off topic. My hips do come up every six months because I'm, I, I mean, I remember one of my autobiographies was going to be the boy with the boy that didn't know his hips or the boy, I forgot what it was called, but you know, the boy, the boys who, boy whose hips never hinged, the hingeless hips. The tale of the hingeless hips. Oh boy, was that a classic tale. The hips without a hinge. The hit, and then the hips, be, the sequel was even better. The unhinged hips. Oh boy. And then, of course, the, the bonus content that it cost extra. Unhinged hips after dark. Okay, so uh, where was I? Oh, so uh, the intro goes on and on and on to give you some distance and help you ease you into bedtime. But you could also skip it. Like 2% of listeners start the show at 20 minutes. Then another few, I think a couple, like a decent amount of patrons listen to story-only episodes, which is just the story portion of the show. But for most listeners, and this isn't, you can, as you become a regular listener, you can kind of decide or it can change. People's relationship with the show changes all the time. But you can kind of see how it goes because the, 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 uh, the image I have in my mind is that you're easing into bedtime. You know, you're doing something, stretching or relaxing or doodling or petting your pets, maybe brushing your hair. I don't know if you're doing any exfoliating, but you could. I mean, it, it, like exfoliation creates a noise, I think. Because uh, what's mic- what's micro microderm? Is that a thing? Or what about that? Uh, I saw this the other day. My daughter got one. I, th- I can't remember what material it was made out of, but it's like some sort of uh, like a granite roller or maybe it's made out of some other material that you put in the fridge or the freezer. Maybe you're doing some granite rolling or foam rolling. That's what I like to do. Oh, boy, do I love foam roll. I mean, I don't love foam rolling, but I do practice it. So it, whatever, the, the podcast is part, supposed to be part of that that eases you into bedtime, becomes part of your bedtime routine. Gives you some distance between the daytime and the nighttime so that, uh, you know, that, that you can wind out. Because I know for me, it's never been easy falling asleep. So, it, 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 like, I don't want it to be a rigmarole. I ta- ideally, I take the rigmarole out of it. 
Uh, but it does take some getting used to. And so the the other things are the reason I make the show, I make the show because I've been there. I know how it feels and what it's like to dread going to bed or to just wonder, oh, no, not it, please not again tonight. Uh, you do some of that bargaining. Please don't let me think of all the, like, as I'm getting ready for bed, please don't let me think about time and uh, the structure of time. And please don't let me start doing math about the 24-hour the proposal for February I made, and if that would be possible to fall back every single night, uh, well, it seems reasonable for 2020, or I guess that would be 2021. What if, how about that? We just keep, what if we redo, redo 2020? Has anybody proposed that yet? I mean, for me, it's November 2nd, so uh, you're in the U.S. So, so I mean, uh, it, like when you're listening to this, uh, oh, I, my man, I hope you're, uh, Hope you're great, uh, but uh, you say, what, what about a redo? We you know, tw- think about it from 2020's perspective. 2020 say, can't get it. You gonna give it over 2021? I love this idea. Fall back every day. 2020. No more daylight savings or whatever either. Give me a redo with those things. But those are like those are the kind of things I don't want to think about at bedtime, or at least uh, not not think about. But ideally. I'd prefer they go through my mind like a sieve or a sieve. Here's just something on the pop to my head. A sieve named Steve. Have I ever said that on the show? If I had to name a sieve, I would name my sieve Steve. Uh, if I had a sieve, I would name it Kiv, I guess. Uh, or K- yeah, Kiv, short for Kavina. So... Um, so, so I don't know. I like, I, I, I'm here to take your mind off stuff and bring some levity to bedtime. Ideally, uh, though, uh, yeah, and take your mind off stuff. I guess, like, to put a little fallback in that, you say, well, at least I can fall back into bed with Scoots. Uh, and he's going to talk about stuff tonight. He's going to talk about the Mandalorian. He's going to mispronounce Timothy Oliphant's name. I thought he would mispronounce Oliphant or Oliphant, but instead he mispronounced Timothy. Timothy. And uh, so, so the intro goes on and on and on so that you could fall asleep. Then there's the story. Tonight I'll be talking about uh, episode nine or chapter nine of The Mandalorian, The Marshal. And if you haven't seen the show or you might, you know, don't worry. This will be like a bedtime story about, uh, I don't, like, I guess, it, like, I think it, like it would have probably references to Caesar Milan in it because there was a lot of animal training and treat motivation, I think, going on in this show. So we'll talk about that, then we'll have some thank you. So that's a structure show. It's a podcast you don't really need to listen to or pay attention to. I make the show because I've been there, but also because you deserve a good night's sleep. And if you can get a good night's sleep, you're going to be in a better place to live your life a little bit more fully. Or just not to be grouchy. Like, I get grouchy. Holy mackerel, do I get grouchy. And, you know, with the days when I'm not grouchy, my life's a little bit better and the people I encounter, their lives are a little bit better. So that's what I hope I can provide. Now, like I said, the podcast doesn't work for everybody. It's a little bit different. So just give it a few tries and see how it goes. But I'm glad you're here. I really, really work hard on the show. I really, really uh, want to help you fall asleep. I appreciate you coming by. And here's a couple of ways I'm able to make this podcast possible for you twice a week. Hey, everybody, it's Scoots here, and I'm here to talk about therapy. I work with a licensed professional therapist uh, on a regular basis, and it has been so beneficial in my life. And if you're out there thinking about it, you know, you're, you're dealing with something, you're feeling overwhelmed, maybe it's anxiety, maybe you just want to make some changes in your life, and you want to have someone there to listen and to help you with issues. Uh, a professional therapist is an amazing, for me, life-changing resource. So whatever it is anxiety, grief, depression, relationships, uh, sleep, anything you're dealing with, a licensed professional therapist can help. And with BetterHelp, all you do is simply fill out a questionnaire to help assess your basic needs. And then you get matched with your counselor in under 48 hours. From there, you can easily schedule secure video or phone sessions, plus exchange unlimited messages to communicate with your therapist at your convenience. And everything you share is confidential. If for any reason you're 
you're unhappy with your counselor, you can request a new one at any time at no additional charge. So you can find someone you feel good with, which is just another important part of the process. It's just another safe place to, for you to find. Join the 1 million plus people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced BetterHelp counselor. BetterHelp is an affordable option for our listeners and get 10% off your first month with the discount code Sleep With Me. That's one word, sleep with me. Get started today at B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com. That's betterhelp.com slash sleep with me. Talk to a therapist online and get help. Betterhelp.com slash sleep with me for 10% off your first month. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody. I don't know if it was Don Henley or somebody else is saying, but we're back in the Mando life again. Was that Don? I think it was some, Steve Winwood. Maybe it was uh, singing that song. Both uh, Hunter and uh, the, the the Hunted. This is uh, Chapter Nine, The Marshal. I actually started the wrong episode, so I said Star Wars Open. Then I heard beep beep beep, and I said, "Oh wait, that's Episode One, not Episode Nine. Uh, precisely Dexter voiceover, Way of the Mandalore." Uh, I don't think that says precisely Dexter, but, uh, the finger, there's a, the, where he's touching, uh, Oso's finger, there's voiceover about the way of the Mandalore, the code of the guild, Navarro, Namando going rogue. This is all the recap of last season. No life for a kid. Old way. Sh- showdown. Yoda Power, Songs of Eon Past, Battles Between Mandalore the Great and a Sorcerer's Name the Jedi. By the creed, it's in its care. You must reunite it uh, and feel so good with its own kind. This is the way. Yeah, we see trouble with that. I put X Wing trouble, but it's actually a TIE fighter. Secrecy is important. Take care of the little one. This is the way. Oh, he takes off. Uh, oh, that's when we see the um, dude coming out of the uh, X-Wing. And then we see Lucas. The, this is made by Lucasfilm. Star Wars helmet or uh, type shots and droid shots. Uh, and we, then we, it opens. Uh, we're back. Isn't it nice to be back here uh, in the hands of uh, Capable storytellers, in my opinion, I say, oh boy, I can relax and kick back and just enjoy an episodically modular series in this with a touch of seriality. So it's night. Uh, it's there's lights, street light. Well, first we see city lights and uh, a man in his uh, floating pram just walking. Uh, Yoda's sitting up for the ride, taking it all in. Oh, oh, so excuse me. I think Oso's in a robe now. I don't know if, how long that's been, or maybe a burlap sack. We see a graffiti through the town. It's a anti-Pac-Man ghost graffiti. They say, we don't like, pa- like, this is a pa- Pac-Man friendly town where they don't like stormtroopers or Mandalorians. But I would assume it's based on uh, Pac-Man. We also see red eyes, uh, so some puppies or something, keeping an eye on Oso and the Mandalore. I don't know what a secret uh, cookies are in there. What do they call those brownies when you hide something in a show? It's not. A, is it a cookie? Cookie's something else. Uh, is it a cupcake when you hide something in the background of a, a, a TV show? Anyway, they're looking for Gore Koresh. And, uh, the, the, the person they go to like a door person and they say, enjoy the games. Then we see our first tangent, uh, because I got to talk about Gamorrean guards briefly. And I haven't talked about this in a while, but, uh, once upon a time when I was a boy, just a young lad, a bit older than Oso or, or physically, because I'm a human and not a. Uh, whatever, uh, like a Yodish being. I made my first trip to the, one of the first trips I went to the movies, the first two movies I saw that I know of were Sword in the Stone and Fox and the Hound. And I think that was on their second runs in the theater. And I remember begging to see Empire Strikes Back, but I was too young. 
and we saw Return of the Jedi. And I, had, I guess I, I maybe I, that was the first movie I saw because I was I had convinced myself uh, that the movie theater would be Star Wars based, like that it would have I mean what you would call nowadays like a Star Wars pop up shop, and that they would either be giving away Star Wars action figures or we would have an opportunity to purchase them at a very big discount. And I don't know what convinced me of this, but I was holding it on as it was truth. And I decided I would purchase a, or if they were giving away for free, and we had a choice, I would pick a Gamorrean guard because they were bigger. And I figured I'd just get more value. I said, well, that's the biggest one I could pick out. Yeah, so I'm definitely going to pick that one because I get the most value out of it, the most bang for my buck. I mean, if I could go back in time and say, we got to get the Boba Fett one because that's when worth money. But, uh, alas, they weren't giving away Gamorrean guard uh, figures. I guess the action figures came out before the movie because I knew about the action figures before I saw the film. But it, it was great to see a movie. So the Gamorrean guards are doing, um, they're doing some, some sort of Gamorrean version of sumo wrestling. Uh, and they have electric loincloths. And I don't know if you remember that movie. That was one, what's it called? The Last Electric Loincloth. That was a classic. I thought that was a Disney film. Or maybe that was a remake that I saw. That was one of those videotapes they found in the woods on a trail. The Last Electric Loincloth. But it really was, that That was a, that. that but so that's, uh, that would be the fan fiction I would write about this. Oh, and again, just when you feel like you're in the hands of a capable person guiding you through an episode, you really, there's a lot of a subtle misdirection that I enjoy or playing with your, uh, antici- like what you anticipate. So I really enjoyed that. Oh, so is very active in, in body language, not liking this uh, situation. And there's more than one case where you say, is also going to be an active protagonist in this. So, so I really like that build up, and also just watching Oso take stuff in and process it, and a lot more Oso sound effects. Uh, and then uh, there's there's this thing uh, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. That's like I don't know if that's a truism. That's something my dad used to tell me when I'd ask, I'd say, "Well, can we get some action figures?" He'd say. In the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. And I'd, I'd sit there, like I'd say, can, "Okay, can we go? Can we get? Can we go? Can I get an action figure?" But in this one, yeah. So there's this uh, person that's Gore Koresh. Osos or Mando's meeting up with him. What's up with the kid? Where I go, he goes. Uh, and he says, what's up? I, I say, I got to track down some Mandalorians. He says, it's uncouth to talk business right away. Uh, when, and, uh, then he says, are you a gambling man? And the dude just says, do I look like I'm wearing shiny armor of a high priced metal that's known for its armor based properties? Uh, so wouldn't that give you, isn't that your answer there? I'm covered in armor. Like, uh, and he says, so are you a gambling man? And he says, not when it can be avoided. And the guy says, yeah, Beskar, what about, I like that Beskar armor. Uh, and uh, the Mando says, well, I don't leave anything to chance. And then the uh, uh, Gore Koresh says, uh, uh, J- I don't know, Gore Koresh played by John Tesh? I don't think so. But uh, I think it's play. I think played by, oh, I can't remember. Because we saw... Uh, Whose name did we see in the credits? I said, is that, who, who did that, who did they play? I'll think of it, but, uh, nor do I, uh, thanks for caring, uh, hidden hives to harvest, uh, Hester value. I don't know what any of that says. Thanks for coming by. Uh, but basically what happens is, uh, he says, uh, they say you, 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 uh, we're going to take your electric loin cloth. Oh, also, Oso gets in his uh, seat when he knows there's trouble. Hidden hives to harvest. Does somebody say that? Thought you weren't a gambler. Let's see. I'm not. Oh, the, I guess I'm ahead of myself. Or I'm behind. Oh, he basically says the best scars price is rising. And so I'm going to um t- take your armor from you. 
Hidden hives to harvest. I'm just trying to see if that's something I imagined. Everybody, everybody out, so they say, when he says I don't gamble. Thanks for coming to me. Oh, yeah, I've been having to go to your hidden hives to harvest because I love uh, Beskar steel because I can, you know, it's a, whatever, it's good for uh, hedging or whatever they do. Harvest your precious tiny shells. I'm fond of it. So I'll take it now. And Mandalorian, you know, he doesn't take the stuff. He goes, tell me where, where, where the Mandalorian you know about is. And I'll walk out. We'll all walk out of here. Oso oh, hides. Uh, and he basically, there's, they're no, they're not, they can't match up against, uh, like, electric loincloths or not. Mandalorian says, of course I have an electric loincloth because, you know, what do you think powers my suits? Uh, so they, they, I don't know. They, 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 they it's just a, it's just an interesting sequence of the electric loincloths. A couple of other people have like electric shoulder plates and stuff, but no match for, uh, ma- 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 no match for it. No match for the best car. The character runs off. Uh, he's wearing a cummerbund and a tuxedo jacket. And Mandalor, Mandal, the Mandalorian uh, hangs him up, uh, Jinjar, Jinjarin, and he says, uh, guys on Tatooine, promise me you're going to uh, let me walk away. And he goes, I promise you I'll walk away. Yeah, where's the Mandalorian? Tatooine. You swear by that? Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, I was all, only Mando I know is on Tatooine. Mandalorian goes, I was just there. I didn't see any Mandalorian. He goes, it's good. It's good, man. City of Mas Pelgo. I swear by the Gothra. And Mando says, Tatooine it is. And then he turns out the lights and uh, uh, Gorkoresh is kissed by puppies. Uh, also, you know, sees that. And then we have the opening of the Mandalorian. Chapter 9, The Marshal. Then we see the, um, whatever that the ship's called, the Razor Crest is in space with music. There's a planet, there's canyons, there's Tuscans. Uh, I already forgot what their, uh, their creatures are called. They're beasts of burden, but I'll remember that too. Uh, we see planes, we see a city, we see, and then we find, we see a Sedaris, uh, Top one of the top two Sedaris is on the planet. You know, tough to choose between two, you know uh, Amy and David. But uh, on a on an episode of Mandalorian, I'll take Amy. And uh, you know, at writing a short story about uh, Amy Sedaris's time on the Ma- Mandalorian, hmm, that, I'd say I'd take David probably, or I'd take both of them writing about it separately. He lands, droids, you go. He doesn't like droids. Have at it. Uh, so he likes droids now. Guess a lot has changed since your last... Oh, there he is. Thank the Force. Oh, so, oh, so cute. Give me that baby. Come here, you little womp rat. Uh, and also makes some sound effects. Looks like it remembers me. How much do you want it? Just kidding. Not really. Uh, if this thing ever divides or buds, I'll play, pay for the offspring. And just don't feed it after midnight. Then the droids are having an issue. There's just a, like a little comedy sequence, you know. They give us a little lightheartedness. Here on business, need your help. Uh, business you shall have. You want me to babysit? No, I'm quested to bring this back to its kind. Can't help you there. Never seen any one of these, uh, and I've seen a lot. Uh, I need a Mandalorian, uh, uh, another of my kind. They'll help me through the coverts. She goes, I never see you're the only Mando I know. What about Mos Pelgo? Oh, boy, haven't heard about that one. I thought it was gone. Wiped out by bandits. Uh, when the Empire fell, it was a for free-for-all. That's why I still stay in the city walls. And she brings up, she goes, R5, get over here with the map. Uh, no, take your time. <laughs> More comedy. Uh, can't get good help. I don't even know who to, it's just really good. I mean, this show is so worth watching if you're not watching it. Uh, so she shows him a map, uh, the, the, like uh, shows him where Mospel goes, could be, or once was. Uh, that's where it was before. 
Uh, take your time. Oh, she's talking R5. What was there? He goes, did you guess that speeder bike? Uh, she goes, yeah. Then we go. He takes a jump off a of sand dune. Oso's on the side, loving the ride. You know, the desert air and Oso's baby hair. We see some sand people, Mando. Uh, they share a fire. They talk. They have a dinner together. And they're using their combination of language and sign language and you know, sharing a meal. Oso's sitting there, too. Then we have more driving through the desert. We see... Uh, I said, is that, do we see WAP rats at some points? Uh, there's more driving. And then Mando rolls into town. When Mando comes to town, there's, that's another song. Who sang that? When Mando comes to town. But people give him a WTF face. Uh, they're not, they don't seem very friendly. So he goes straight to the, like, uh, the bar cantina. That's where, you know, that's a, like, uh, at least in film and, and uh, the saloon, I guess, in this situation. Frontier Town. Actually, it's not for Frontier Town. This is a mining town. And the Frontier Mining, maybe? I don't know. But uh, what do they say? It goes to the bar. I thought at first I was definitely confused because I wasn't paying close enough attention on my first watch, which was for pleasure. So that's okay, you know, when I'm watching it for fun. But I said, is that the same bar and bartender? As uh, what the gum chewer episode, but it's not. It's a you know because he hadn't been to the city before. He had to get directions. There's also an ATM in the bar, so if anybody goes there, it could be one of those bars. They say we only take cash, but we got an ATM over there. Twenty dollar service charge. Oso sneaks into the bar, and but 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 Mando goes. You seen any Mandalorians? Uh, he goes, Amanda, what a little, and he goes, anybody like me? Bartender says, we don't, you know, we don't get many visitors to these here parts. Uh, uh, but he's pleasant enough. Uh, and he goes, well, that would be the marshal. Uh, and Amanda goes, marshal? And he goes, yeah, see for yourself. And then we have the classic stare down as the marshal is in Mandalorian armor, not shiny Mandalorian armor, in the doorway. Striking a very uh, interesting, uh, different different setup uh, than our Mandalorian. And he walks up. Uh, what brings you here, stranger? Uh, you, I'm looking for you. Uh, many parsecs. Uh, he goes, okay, two, two snorts of spotchka. He goes, join me. And his, he takes his helmet off. His, his, uh, his armor has seen a lot of action. It's got a lot of pock marks, a lot of damage. And then he takes his helmet off and we say, holy, 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 and great hair, man. Timothy Oliphants. Uh, and uh, what a, what a cam. I don't know if this is a cameo, but, uh, it's, it's a cameo. And the, see, what a, what of a series of cameos for, for sleep with me. We had Oliphant in a good place. Now we have Timothy here out in the outback. He goes, yeah, you're probably no. Oh, also, Oso's in a spittoon, uh, like looking in a spittoon. And Timothy Oliphant says, "She's never met a real Mandalorian. I know your reputation precedes you, though. And clearly, you know, I'm not a Mandalorian, but I'm wearing Mandalorian armor. So why don't we share a drink? Because it's probably going to be trouble, eh? And but then he goes, and I see this little guy here looking in the spittoon. So maybe I have you wrong. Maybe you're not a B U L L Y. So sit down and let's talk. And Mandalorian goes, uh, who who are you? And he goes, uh, Vance Cobb or something. He goes, I'm the Marshal of Mos Pelgo. Keep peace in this part. Yeah, Cobb Vanth. Goes, where'd you get the armor? Bought it off some Jawas. Where 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 do you think I got it? Uh, Mandalorian goes, hand it over. And he says, look, I know you were used to being the boss, but I'm, you know, I'm just here. Do you, have you seen my hair? Maybe, uh, he goes, I'm in charge here. And Mandalorian says, take it off, man. Or I'll take it off you, which is not very, but I mean, Mandalorian's known for his brusque demeanor. He goes, there's a kid here. And he goes, yeah, I just I already dealt with somebody. 
And Cobb Vance is, you know, the marshal says, okay, well, if we have to, we have to, unfortunately. But I would say, you know, if I'm an authority figure in this town, I can't have you coming in and doing it. Uh, and then this earth starts to shake. Uh, Oso hides right in the spittoon. Poor, poor Oso. Uh, and the cop Vance, the marshal, holds up a one-second police finger. We see a windmill. We see rumbling. We see people running. Wind picks up. Uh, the sand begins to move. And it, at first I thought it was a sandworm. It's dinner time. And I said, holy dune tremors and uh, Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. I'm not going to say it thrice, though. Because I don't need to. And uh, maybe it's a worm. Oh, and then the, 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 they're together as this, this uh, sandworm type creature goes through town, snacks on some uh, 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 some friendly friendly character, just a kiss. And then he says, maybe we could work something out. And Amanda says, work something out how? And he says, well, this thing's too much for me to deal to 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 to, to, to deal with. It's a um, crate dragon. And uh, he goes, maybe if you help me, uh, we can make a deal. You know, uh, you help me, I give you the armor. And Mando says, okay, uh, fair enough. Well, that's a deal. He goes, so, so what do we, and he goes, I know where it lives. Uh, I also said, Cobb Vance, can you actually, like, I realize, and, and, like, uh, can you keep that helmet on or keep your helmet with you at least? I mean, I know you got that square jaw and the beautiful hair, but can you at least, uh, can you please, can you please, uh, can you? Oh, also once upon a time in, um, once upon a time in Hollywood, that was another, yet another time. It was, I said, a holy, holy. So town cleans up, uh, and they head off into the desert, the two of them. Mando on his uh, sweeter bike and Cobb Vance on like a pod racer type vehicle. And they're talking. They say, let's do some driving and uh, let's get some exposition in while we drive. And the Mando says, it uh, sounds exactly what I like, man. And Cobb Vance. And again, I like because uh, I missed the exposition earlier the first time I watched so tell, don't tell me once how you're going to do things. Tell me twice. So Cobb Vance does, but in more detail. He says, okay, so the Death Star, second Death Star, right? Mando goes bye-bye. Everybody's partying. Bar was packed. Uh, fireworks. We're watching on the news. Uh, but he goes, there's a vacuum, power vacuum. And so the mining collective comes in. And uh, he, he says, one thing I got to say, this is my favorite bartender. I got to save my bartender. Not knowing that people in the mining collective don't know how to make drinks, so they're going to need a bartender anyway. But I guess at least initially, he says, they got real. They they probably had to realize it. So he does say, okay, I got to make them appreciate that they need a bartender. So he saves the bartender. He says, I took what I could, uh, and uh, I was saved. Oh, so he takes what he can. It ends up he get, grabs like one of those buckets uh, that's also like a safe and a cooler, like that had Beskar seal in it. That's what you use to carry around your valuables uh, on different planets. But you also have people that don't value floating prams. I'm sure out here they would, because if you're in a mining business, you say, well, what do you need these beasts of burden for? I'll just bring over some floating prams. They throw them away over on this other planet. Uh, but he, Cobb Vance, runs, uh, and then he wanders in the desert. So definitely this cool western feel. He gets picked up by the Jawas, and the Jawas love the crystals. The crystals he has, Ciliax crystals, are high value, very high value. So he goes, I got more than a full, you know, uh, water bottle. You know, they offered me the most expensive items and also a callback that I remember. I'm pretty sure I'm going to watch it again to be sure. But I think they have the, the C-L-O-W-N head of a droid that is in the first the Star Wars, the original Star Wars that came out first when they're in the um, moving thing. They still haven't been able to sell that because it's like a. Uh, they say, I don't want a droid that looks like that. It's not, it's unsettling. 
let's see. Right now he's drinking water. All the Jawas are walking around. They're going to start, uh, they open up his safe and they say, whoa boy, purple crystals. This stuff's great. So they offer him his finest wares. First, like a va- look, look, a Dyson vacuum. Then, uh, like R2 type units. Then, I'm pretty sure, let's see, this is coming up next. He sees the Beskar armor, or the uh, Mandalorian armor. Yeah, there it is. It definitely is. I don't normally notice these cookies, but that's definitely the CLOWN droid from the first movie. Never liked that thing. No, never will. Uh, talk about Holy Claire Bell, right? Uh, or what's that sl- slappy from the uh, bumps of uh, when your uh, your hair stands up and books? Okay, so where are we? So then he goes back to deal with the mine. He gets the armor, goes back to deal with the mining collective. Uh, Marshall's back in town. Shows down with them. They run because they're B U L L I E S. He jetpacks them out of there. He says, Not only are you going to, now you're not a mining collective because you're uh, tried to become authoritarians. Now you're totally out. So collect your mining and get out of town permanently. Went on their permanent record because he's a marshal. He keeps permanent records. Uh, so they're gone. Uh, then they're in the desert canyon. Now we're back to the present. Enough exposition, they say. And I say, well, that was delicious. Uh, so they're in the desert canyon. They stop. Uh, there's lots of sound effects. As far as I know, we meet a new type of being, a dino dog, which Mando charms the dino. First, the cop Vance is a bit prickly sometimes. So he says, what are you doing? The Mando says, these are dino dogs. You just pet them and you treat them with respect. Then some sand people come, and Cobb Vance is like, what are you doing? He goes, they, they communicate for a while. He goes, they want to kill the, or, he says, they like to create dragon, which is like the sandworm, to move out of town as well. So if we could get that to happen as a team, that would be great. Then we see uh, another thing, like, uh, we see the, um, one of the sand people cleaning one of its piece of burden's teeth with its like stick that you've seen in a lot of sequences before in Star Wars sequences with sand people. And uh, then they sit by the fire. They're supposed to share this drink. Uh, the dogs like Oso. It's like a carbon smoke plant, a drink that you share. And Cobb Vance is stubborn, so he says, "I'm not drinking this." So, you know, I don't, I don't abide by sand people. Uh, and Mandalorian says, you're the one who's stolen all their water. And so he raises his voice. Mando says, talk with your inside out voice, you know, campfire voice, man. And they start, well, Cobb Vance starts arguing. So then the uh, sand people are arguing, you know, strongly reacting to his argument. Uh, so Mando waves the fire of peace. Uh, and he gives him a coach talk. Like you're talking to just like a coach, like uh, in a movie. He, he says, everybody sit down. And we're going to talk about this, uh, and we're going to talk about it, and we're going to talk about it in a way that moves forward. We, we, either we work together, either we work together, or we work in opposition. And it's going to be a lot of easier to work together as a team and do this as a, we have we have a shared goal. So put your hands in here, and we'll ride out uh, to the desert. Then it's morning, and they're on the um. The the horned horned beast of burden, which uh, don't worry, at some point I remember what they're called. They go through the deserts. One of them, a couple of them, go up to the cavern. They leave uh, they leave like a couple of energy bars at the entrance of the cave cave, and they say, yeah, the sand people have been feeding this thing more and more over the years, like thousands of years, or I think or hundreds of years. Uh, so that's so they sleep longer. Uh, like like the long, more you feed it, the, so you give it a uh, offering of a ba- oh bantha bantha bars. He says you give it five bantha bars, and, the, and then Vance Cobb's, Cobb Vance says, "What are the bantha bars made of? Banthas?" He goes, "No, bantha, uh, fi- you know bantha, ba- you know bantha pies." And Cobb Vance says, "The great dragon drink, eats bantha pies," and then there's a long sequence where he say, they go through and they say, "Well, the bantha." 
has like 44 stomachs. It consumes its concentrated nutrients to the bant to the to us to the bant that's waste. But the bantha actually consists on things we would, it's just a weird thing. Bantha's made up, you know, it's a desert dwelling creature. And then Kavan says, so in that case, what does a bantha eat? And uh, Mando says, waste, you know, and he says, so wait a second. And he goes, yeah, it's, uh, you could, the desert's not a totally closed ecosystem. Also, it's it had a sarlacc before, which brings up like the idea of like, Last time we saw Cobb Vance's armor was in a Sarlacc pit. So they do that Bantha Bar thing. Then there's a Wookiee call from the, there's a lot from the, that Obi-Wan did. Sam person runs, but they don't run fast enough. And the, uh, Great Dra- also watches too and makes sound effects. But the Great Dragon says, enough Bantha Bars. Uh, I want to lick a sand person. And it does that, uh. And they go, oh, snap, man, any fresh ideas? And uh, we get just get a bare sense of the great dragon uh, size. Uh, uh, oh, so is oh, so cute in this, man. Oh, maybe it hi- oh, so hides, pops its head up. Uh, then they have a meeting with the Tuscans. Uh, and they say, okay, let's bring it together. Let's cross it. Let's swirl it around. They have a whole model set up. Uh, Cobb Ban says that's not, it's not that big, and man, he's he's Cobb explaining things, uh, and he could, like uh, Mando says they know what they're talking about, man, uh, and so they say, well, how are we going to do this? They're trying to plot it out with the model, cut it, pad it, mark it with a B, tickle its belly is eventually what the, they come to, which is a nice way to solve a problem. They say, like, uh, how are we going to do this? We don't have a way to do this. Uh, Mando shares the idea in Tuscan. Then there's more rocks. Uh, or there, I don't think the I don't know if the rocks are um, like mini acorns. And the cop says, where are they getting more people? He goes, your village, dude. He goes, you want to do this? So then they drive back, which is a strange, long, non-talking sequence. So I don't know if they cut the uh, dialogue. Or, but it's like about four seconds. I said, that's a long four seconds. Uh, then the town, uh, they have a town meeting. Uh, town, town will listen to reason. They respect you, Mando says. So go into that meeting and give it everything you got, uh, kid. And he says, we're equal. We're, you know, and then he's this. So then he says, this is a Mandalorian. You, you ever heard of him? Yeah, we heard the rumors about him. You know, they're, they, they're not easy to deal with. And Cobb goes, yeah, they're good at stuff. Uh, and he goes, See, this one's got a problem. I got his armor, and by law, I got to give it back to him. So I worked a deal, though. I've got a problem. Great dragon. And then he goes, not only is that dealing with the armor, like our our mining stuff, he goes, there's a school in our town, you know. And he goes, we can't, we got to protect the school. That gets everybody on board. Vote Cobb 20, you know, 30, 34 or whenever. Uh, he goes, a Mandalorian's going to help us uh, in exchange if I give the armor back to him, which just seems like a fair deal. Everybody says, well, that's good. The bartender goes, perfect. Uh, bar tab paid up. And Cobb says, yeah, we need help. Uh, he goes, we need all you and all the sand people. And then the people have, they, they, they you know, they have their own, uh, they, they, you know, ideas about sand people that aren't based in fact, uh, more based in feelings. So the Mando makes a speech. Uh, he goes, yeah, you got your differences, but this we all have something in common. Uh, haven't you heard this idea of common enemy? We got a common enemy, create dragon. So we can put aside our differences and work together. He goes, oh, so they keep the word. We made a deal, and the deal's going to be good. So uh, we got to leave it at its carcass and ick or whatever. And uh, they said it'll be peace unless you start trouble. That's what they say. So everybody nods. And then we have the, um, they say, oh, then Mando and uh, Vance meet together. Okay, joining forces are our only hope. Uh, our only hope is when, you know, they, I don't know if they have to say that in all Star Wars things. 
like another fine mess you got me into. But then the sand people arrive on a, 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 a um, caravan of banthas, and they everybody starts loading up. Uh, there's big music, lots of staring from the townspeople. Somebody does say, we could use it, if only we could had more floating prams, uh, we could get there. Also, I, I wanted to say, like, if you watch this, watch it, look at a, ban- a bantha face. I have resting bantha face. Uh, that's the exact way my face looks 99% of the time. And this is not a joke. That's my normal look is the exact look on a bantha's face. So I don't even have resting bantha face. I have a 24-7 bantha face. So you could call me bantha face if you want. Hash, you know, I don't think we need to hashtag it. Just say, uh, Scoots, do you really have... Oh, yeah, I've seen a picture of you. Except when I'm posing for pictures. Then I have uncomfortable, you know, bantha waste face when bantha's making a waste. So anyway, they drop, somebody drops something. There's a big argument. They say, let's work together, man. Okay, that's what Cal Vance says. Then there's shots of the desert, caravan, they go to the cave. And then we have some great A-team prep work. So for the rest of the episode, I'm going to present this to you in uh, numbered order. So these are the steps. This is a 30, <laughs> this is like a 34, I don't even know how many step plan to uh, deal with the great dragon uh, in, in a sequence. So, so this is the sequence. Uh, step one. Look at the cave and stand around. Step two, one person, preferably a uh, uh, like a, like not you, walks to the cave. In this case, it does have to be a Tuscan. Have them feel the ground. Do a dramatic cave shot. Uh, what's going on? They listen to the ground. They say, it's sleeping and snoring. Okay, three, drink the... the, the uh, the drink that shows unity, the, the carbon smoke drink, uh, to show that you're unity in a team. Step four, carry a bunch of stuff near the cave. Step five, dig a trench and bury the tickle, the tickle, like, uh, ticklers. They have the little ticklers that they're burying. Like, uh, so they have a combined thousands of these things, like back massagers that are battery operated. And uh, they, that's their plan. They think they presented their plan. I didn't communicate it. Or maybe they did reveal it as they're doing it. They say, okay, we're going to get it out here. These are remote controlled. Turn it on. It'll tickle its belly so much that the thing will just move out of town because it, it doesn't like being tickled, great dragons. doesn't like it in a way where it's a, not, it doesn't prefer it. It says, I prefer not to be tickled, so I will leave the area. Also, they have these like uh, vibrating Nerf darts, so that are shot out of Nerf crossbows. So those also would suck, stick to you with suction cup and vibrate. If you were a crate dragon, it would tickle. So they set that up. That's step six. Also, do some narration of your plan during this time. So step five, four carry stuff. Step five, dig a trench, put the ticklers in. Step six, get the Nerf crossbows with the ticklers ready and narrate your plan. Step seven, bury more ticklers, ideally with more great music and narration. Step eight, get get the remote control. Have a kid bring the remote control to you to show one more likable moment and get the remote control for the remote-based ticklers. Nine, take possession of the remote and st- tell the kid to stay safe. Step 10, walk and observe uh, progress uh, that has been completed or almost completed at a distance. 11, everybody get ready, you know, get ready and anticipate something getting ready to happen. Step 12, send three people this time to walk towards the cave. Uh, ideally, you know, not from your party, as everybody would think. Uh, but these, the, the, uh, the uh, not the Banthas, the uh, Tuscans are, are, very, are much more brave. Plus, they can do the call. So then they do the call. Uh, make the call. Step 13, run as fast as you can. Step 14, run faster than that. Uh, 
Step 15, use vibrating Nerf uh, darts. Uh, oh, they also have uh, streamers attached to them. 16, hold the streamers uh, that make it even more powerful, vi tickling vibration. Step 17, watch. Uh, you didn't overwhelm it with tickling, so the uh, great dragon suspects something and starts to retreat. Step eight, step eighteen. It doesn't totally retreat, so just wait uh, for a second. Step nineteen. Throw uh, Nerf balls, everything you can at it. Uh, more Nerf darts. Uh, also in step nineteen, then more air, run. Throw more stuff. Uh, uh, shoot more Nerf darts. Uh, wait with the the, the remote control because we only have one shot. Uh, Step 20, you've made it. You've gotten the crates attract attention again. Uh, shoot more Nerf darts uh, and hold on to them and try to pull them so they're getting the most tickling. Step 21, never mind, run away again. Step 22, the crate dragon disappears. And, uh, like, uh, the bad news is when it hides, uh, it comes back out and it can, it has a slime, it has ability to slime people and cover you in gross, gross slime. Step 23, I can't read. It looks like it says now, but that can't be it. And now wind. So let's see what happens. So they're getting slimed right now. Oh no, it didn't hide yet. It just slimed the people. Oh no. Yeah. So I'm ahead of it. So it doesn't go and hide. So it slimes them. Then they try the ticklers. But the crate dragon just happened to be moving when they launched the ticklers. So that says now. Then there's wind from so much vibration of ticklers. But uh, the crate dragon goes under the ground. Oh, dear. Uh, because now the crate dragon takes the high ground and starts sliming everybody from above. Step 24, C, somebody say womp rats, or we're getting, we're caught like womp rats. Step 25, heroes, put on your helmets and fly using the jetpacks while Oso watches. Also, if you have any hero music, play it now. Step 28, we brought, we have superior nerf uh, vi vibrate, vibration tickling weapons uh, It with feathers. Uh, use them. Keep doing that. So keep shooting it with feather-based uh, nerf, nerf, nerf darts. Okay, step twenty-eight didn't work. Step twenty-nine, run away by air because we can't. We're, we have jetpacks, so run, but by air. Step thirty, we really irritated the crate dragon. It's it's get ready because it's disappeared again. Step thirty-one, turn around. It's behind us. Uh, Step 32, run again really fast. Uh, step 33, ideally get a new idea. Step 34, let's make it really mad. Use your super, your thing that looks like a Nerf dart, but it's really full of water because it's just a sponge, so, so that'll really get on its nerve. Step 35, this one's right out of the Mando playbook. The old... Uh, you know, self, the total heroism, take care of Oso because I can't take care of him now because I got to do something super heroic for Oso and because it's the right thing to do and I'm capable of doing it. 36, wait with the Bantha that has a bunch of backup vibrating ticklers that have double feathers on them. Step 36B, hold on to the really, hold on really tight to the Bantha because it doesn't want to be it, like, it doesn't want the great dragon to come so close so that it gets tickled. Step 37 uh, is a mystery because the the, the Bantha, Mando, and uh, so mystery move, but it really is paid off almost instantly, but it's a mystery right now move. Uh, like, uh, we don't know where Mando the the great dragon or the one bantha with all the ticklers went. Oh, the earth shakes. Uh, then the the um great dragon bursts out because uh, on step thirty eight, what you really did was the old Nostromo or Pinoc whatever Pinocchio's dad's name was move or Pinocchio. 
into the belly of the whale. Scoots has probably used that like five or six times in his stories too. Also do the electric slide with the ticklers on the inside of the Great Dragon. That'll tickle it twice as much because Great Great Dragons have double the ner- like, uh, nerve endings on the inside. Seth 39, Great Dragon runs away but also leaves behind tons of nutrients because it was so tickled so much that the great dragon also like banthas leaves behind lots of nutrients that, I mean, that's not even gross because it's just a fact in the, of the life in the deserts. Also a lot of water in its own containers, uh, like, uh, purified water. Uh, step 40, do a lot of close-ups of everybody and hugs and cheering all as well. Uh, step 41, clean up, uh, also even gets, uh, one of the pieces of leftovers, uh, and Mando to say, this is great stuff. This is even last longer than Bantha bars. Step 42, I guess this is more than four, like, uh, return the armor. My pleasure. Uh, also let your people know I didn't break this, uh, you're a good man, you know, do that thing. You're a good, you're a good father or a good person taking care of Oso. Well, you're a good marshal. Hope our paths cross again. Step 43 for the uh, sand people, find a pearl, uh, that was, that was a lucky, must have been like a lucky charm, but it wasn't so lucky for the great dragon. So that's good for them. Step 44. Just like you would expect, ride off into the desert sunset to awesome music. And that ends, oh no, then that ends the episode. Sunsets, I sorry, I forgot to the main part that would have been good. So ride off into the sunsets uh, or sunrises because there's two suns or moons on the planet they're on. Step 45, be viewed by a mystery figure. Uh, that's, you know, maybe Boba Fett, I don't know. But uh, but then also the one that was probably in the other episode. And then we'll go through. This time there's 11 uh, uh, pieces of art. There's a, The first one is the Great Dragon against the, the end titles. Uh, then a Banth, the Ride into the Sun, Suns. Uh, then a speeder bike ride with Oh So Having Fun. Then for the dude from the beginning, upside down. Oh, that. Let's see. Now that the titles are running, I can figure out who who that was. Uh, I don't know how it, my mind is totally blank, and I know exactly who it is, but I can't think of it unless they do the voice for somebody else. Uh, and then I'll go to. There's a speeder. Oh, they're holding hands. Uh, my, where am I? Pedro Pascal. Oh, John Leguizamo. Yeah, sorry, John. I'm, I'm, that's terrible. Okay, so the dude upside down. Then uh, Boom Sheriff. Uh, then the dogs in the canyon. Then Oso playing with a womp rat. Uh, then uh, uh, Art 8 is uh, Fireside Chats. Uh, 9 is uh, Mando. And the Sand People or the Tuscans. I don't know what they prefer to be called. That's why I keep calling them both ones because I say, well, I don't know what they want to be called. Uh, then Mando and the Great Dragon, number 10, when he was flying out of the mouth of it. Uh, then 11 is the sunsets or the sunrises in the mystery person uh, shot from behind. And there's a zoom. There's the old... Uh, Oh, now, now, uh, I, the, that effect you use with pictures uh, is named after a famous document to Ken, Ken, not Ken Jennings, not and then Ken Barnes. Why can't I, Ken, the famous PBS documentarian, Ken, anyway, you know who I'm talking about. It's right in my brain. It's just not accessible. But that effect to where you're zooming in in a picture and moving it, uh, and that's the end of the episode. Uh, Welcome back, Mando. Good night, everybody. All right. I want to thank everybody that became a patron recently and supported the show. I want to thank uh, Carson, Spring, and David. Thank you. Thanks, 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 and good night. I want to thank Ryan, Nicole, and Madeline. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, and good night. I want to thank Emma, Michelle, and Adam. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, and good night. I want to thank Kinga, Erica, and Andrew. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, and good night. 
I want to thank Kizzy, Emily, and Kakate. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. I want to thank Sarah, JR, and Kimberly. Thanks, 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 and good night. I want to thank Char, Christine, and Bridget. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. I want to thank Amanda, Neo, and Josephine. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. I want to thank uh, Miranda, Alyssa, and Javier. Thank you, thanks, 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 and good night. I want to thank Ashley, Laura, and Brandy. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. I want to thank Yaffa, Bruce, and Jacob. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. I want to thank Kevin, Linnea, and Joshua. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. I want to thank Kelly, JC, and Donna. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. I want to thank Rachel, Dungeon Mama, and Elaine. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. I want to thank Stacy, Desiree, and Wallet. Thanks, thanks, and good night. I want to thank Ellen, Seth, and Laura. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. I want to thank Viv and Angela. Thank you, thanks, and good night. Thanks, everybody, for supporting the show. Sleep with me exists a free podcast because we will support this podcast either directly on Patreon or support our sponsors. And we grow this podcast by people simply spreading the word and letting other people know about the podcast or podcasting in general. You don't even have to talk about Sleep with Me, at least initially. Just show people, you know, how to use the podcast or ask them, what podcast app do you use? Oh, what podcast do you listen? Oh, you don't listen? Let me show you what I, let me show you the app. Uh, and just start a conversation around podcasts and everybody benefits. You get to help somebody. They get to discover podcasts and all us podcasters get to keep doing what we're doing. Uh, So thanks. Thanks, everybody. And good night.